Uh, I became a writer um, when I realised that I wasn't probably going to make an awful lot of money being an actor. I trained as an actor and I worked for about eight or ten years there um, as an actor in Britain and in the US. And um, when I was understudying at the National Theatre, um, we had a week off and I did a writing course at the City Lit. Um, and the person on it said, have you ever thought about doing this? Which I hadn't particularly, although I wanted to be a writer, I just didn't think it was kind of like on the cards for me and somebody suggesting it um, made me think about it seriously and that's what I did and I just kept getting work which was really rather wonderful rather than being an actor when I kept not getting work. <laughs> the thing that first interested me about the story of the Freedom Riders was, well it was several things. Um, there was um, a friend recommended the PBS documentary about Freedom Rides, um, which is the most it's a wonderful piece of, of, of filmmaking, and so that was an interesting subject in itself. And um, then there were the riots in Tottenham, um, and there was the woman who spoke and said um, on, on television and to, to the rioters, if you want to write about something, write about something that means something to you, not for a pair of trainers. I'm paraphrasing her, but words along that, those lines. And then when Natalie approached me about writing a, a show for Theatre Centre, um, it was which, which way will it be going for young people? How, how can they have some effect on their world? Um, and the three things seemed to kind of like tie up because of how the Freedom Riders took on change, how they decided they could change their, their universe um, and in a non-violent way, which I feel very important, uh, which I feel is very important. It's always tricky to balance out how you're going to do fact and fiction when you're doing a real, a piece about real events. So I think you have to do based on real events because I had to, I used um, words that freedom riders had actually said, but I put them in the mouths of fictitious freedom riders because I didn't want to actually represent somebody who I hadn't interviewed is alive somewhere now, probably a grandparent, and and say you know so and so with this name who's still alive today said this because I don't know and I don't have all that material, and it isn't a documentary. So I think the license that you have with theatre is to go, this will give you a, a picture of this by giving you my version of things. It's a stylized production as well, it's very theatrical. Um, so every now and then we use real people, obviously people like Diane Nash, who is the leader of the students from Nashville University, who was the second wave of the Freedom Riders, um, and the Kennedys. The Kennedys don't always speak some of them are Kennedy speak out of speeches, some of them are what I imagined they would have under the circumstances in a private room be saying. That's the kind of playwright license. I don't think anybody is saying anything that, in my opinion, they wouldn't have said if they were real people. Um, but I do make things up, that's what my job is. Well, there's, a, there's a, um, a Dorothy Parker quote, I think, that I always say to, to students of mine or students of writing of any sort, playwriting or otherwise, is that plays are not written, they're rewritten. There is no such thing as a perfect first draft. But each draft that you write, you go, this is it, this is the one, because you don't put in a, you know, not very good one, because there wouldn't be any point. So you put in the best that you can do at that point. And through the process of collaboration with, um, in my case, uh, it's usually the director at the first point, sometimes a dramaturg, but in this case it was, it was Natalie Wilson, the director, um, you work out what it is that you need to do on the next draft to move the story forward in a way that is going to turn into a piece of theatre that will work for the audience that you're presenting it to. Mm. Yeah. And yes. then you do lots of drafts. I think on the front of mine at the moment it says 12. <laughs> it does say 12. <laughs> Partly because we need a way of breaking up the story, the story of the Freedom Riders, because otherwise there's an awful lot of being on a bus and being beaten up somewhere horrible. So, and also because I wanted to have an access for um, a British audience, this is why I decided to have a, a, a split company, as it were, of the Freedom Riders story that goes through and the four British actors who present it, who are personalities of their own. Um, so that it will say, why are we telling this story? And you'll pull it back to what it means to people who are watching now. It's, it's, it's a route in, it's an access, I think, is, is one of the reasons for that. And so that you go, so that audiences won't just go, this happened back in the day, somewhere else, what's it got to do with me? 
I hope they'll have quite a lot of questions about how you can change your world, whether you have a right to, what you would like to change in your world. Um, and hopefully, which is one of the reasons why I chose this story, one of the things I would like young people to take away is that because they've seen the Freedom Riders and how they really managed to be part of a huge change in, in, in America and in the whole civil rights movement in America, was by non-violent protest. Um, I think we are in a progressively more violence as an answer universe and non-violence has proved over the years to be a very, very effective way of um, achieving change. Well, as a writer, um, I, I actually am terribly disciplined um, because I don't think you can do it otherwise because there's always a million other ways to structure your time. Um, somebody once told me that, that, that she found her husband, who was a writer, down in the kitchen washing the label off a whiskey bottle and saying it was an essential thing to be done before he started work. So you can always find something that needs doing more than, than writing. I, I work out a plan of how many scenes need to be done or how much research needs to be done for the period of time that I've got. Then I divide it up into achievable chunks, because if you start off trying to write a play um, on Monday, you kind of go, you're frozen by about half past ten and you can't do it because it's too big. If you go, I'll write the first three scenes this morning, um, then that's an achievable goal and I think that works with all kinds of, of, of writing and work generally. And so when I've done my three scenes, I'm allowed out to play. So that's, that's how I do it. Sometimes if I'm on a roll, I will carry on and I'll work for the rest of the day and that's, that's terrific. Mm -hmm. And some days it will really, really hurt to get those three scenes done. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I won't manage it, but you leave yourself extra time as well. You've always got another couple of days to catch up with your kind of schedule. I think my advice to any student who's, who's got a piece of writing and, and it's, it's, I don't think there's, I don't think people get blocked so much as they set themselves too big a goal. Um, I think it's the breaking it down into small chunks, achievable bits, work out a plan. I mean, like people tell you to do for revision and stuff like that. And this can be a huge time waster and you can, and a displacement activity that you can spend days doing. So you only allowed a certain amount of time to do it. But set yourself out a plan and have achievable goals of what you'll do. So you will actually write your outline in the morning and then the next day you're going to go, I'm going, just going to write the first chapter or I'm just going to find the first paragraph or the beginning of my essay, the opening bit of my essay and then you move on. You don't go back and rewrite and edit. You work towards the end, then you go back and edit. Otherwise, you have absolutely perfect first pages and nothing else after it. Um, that would be my advice. And you've got to do it. You can spend an awful lot of time talking about it, but actually to write stuff, you have to write it. Mm. <laughs>